Hey, what's up you guys? My name is Josh. Welcome back to another toy review and today we're going to be taking a look at the Ultra Monster 500 series number 14 Red King. Now, I know, here's the billion dollar question. I get it, alright? Why is he called Red King if he's not even red? Well, I don't know. I don't I don't have an answer to that. And I'm I'm deeply sorry. Uh, his description says that he's supposed, he's supposed to be like a skull kaiju. I mean, I, I guess I could kind of see it based on his design. I mean, he does have a pretty interesting sort of menacing look. I mean, personally, if you ask me, he just kind of reminds me of Godzilla if he was like a corn on a cob. I mean, come on. I mean, look at his neck and then look at the legs. I mean, come on. You can't tell me that you don't see it. I can't be the only one that sees that. Come on. Look at it. I mean... Before we get right to it, let's explain his backstory, right? So he appeared in a 1966 Ultraman, and he appeared in Episode 8, The Anarchy Zone. And it was a, it's a pretty strange episode, really. It's like when a whole bunch of monsters starts kind of attacking, and then he was kind of like sort of the main lead, sort of. Well, not like the main lead, but kind of like the biggest pushover. And then, you know, we also uh, meet Pigmon. This is sort of his first uh, appearance in the Ultraman show. Not his first appearance since he first appeared in Ultra Q, but you, you get the point. I mean, the only difference is that Pigmon was actually kind of an ally to the Science Patrol and Ultraman, so that's interesting. And of course, what's, you know, what's nice to note is that, um, you know, Red King is definitely one of the more, like, very popular kaijus throughout the entire series. And he frequently returns, you know, like, an Ultraman robe, you know, and, um, <clears throat> you know, and like, uh, it's safe to say, he's a very, very popular character. Even in, in the same show, too. I believe, like, in episode 25, uh, he, he, it's not really him that returns, but it's like another Red King, basically. I mean, I don't know. You, you can't beat the big monster, obviously. That You can't beat him down, you know? It's not hard to see why. And uh, before we take a look at the figure, though, let's take a look at his tag that he comes with. Honestly, I love this tag because it's not even, like, from the show. That's just, like, an on-set photo of Ultraman just posing with Red King. The only thing, though, is that obviously when you look at Ultraman's suit, that's that kind of like that weird like torn and kind of beat up suit that they use towards the beginning of the show. And then I think around like maybe after episode 10 is when they start using the improved version. I just thought I kind of note that down because I thought that was interesting. And of course, there's nothing in the inside. His back, you know. Yep. And we let's take a nice little look at the figure. Let's, take, let's go. Take a little nice little look right here. And yeah, I mean honestly, I mean he's a he's a pretty rocky boy, obviously. You know, he got that sort of like rocky texture going on. There we go. Finally. I was waiting for my camera to at least focus. And I love how you got like the little bit of like that blue paint that kind of it kind of bleeds right into his um sort of his body, which I think that was kind of a neat choice. And I really like it. Although I don't know if it's I don't know. I don't know if it's because I like it because it's blue. I don't know <laughs> if I'm being honest with you. Kind of ironic, you know. I mean, he, he he's like blue in like in a lot of places, even under his feet where you kind of see it, you know. And I mean, throughout some parts of the episode, you could kind of see it when whenever he fights Ultraman. Although one thing I do got to note, and this is just super hilarious. This is not on the toy, obviously. This is just from the show. When Ultraman was fighting and, like, this side piece actually torn. And it's, like, if you look like... If you have, like, a good eye, you could see it. And I just thought it was, like, the most hilarious thing. I mean, it wasn't their fault, obviously. You can only imagine that, you know, in the suits, the material probably wasn't very good. Uh, unlike the material with this figure, though. Because it's, like, a kind of nice hard plastic, if I'm being honest. It's not... It doesn't feel squishy at all. It's not one of those more softer figures. You know, he's actually quite... He's hes very hard, if I'm being honest with you. I mean, that's a good thing. It's not bad if it's soft either. I just thought I'd kind of mention that. Because I thought that was pretty interesting, you know, that they kind of went with that. Because, like I say, the figure is made of a much more softer vinyl plastic. So, you would think that for a figure of this kind, or this, you know, caliber, you'd think he'd be slightly soft. But he's actually very, very hard. I, I can literally knock on him. And, of course, we look at the tail. And then, of course, when we look underneath... He got more of that sort of, like, bluish color kind of going on. I mean, I, I, I like it because it kind of reminds me of, like, maybe, like, dirt a little bit, you know? 
I'm not sure if that's what they were going for, but that's kind of what it reminds me of. And we take like a nice little look at his tiny, tiny little head. <laughs> I mean, come on now. And we get like a nice look at the teeth. That's sort of the, come on, come on. There we go. It's, uh, that's always been a nice little look. And you got like the kind of like black sort of glossy eyes going on. Which is interesting to note because like I mentioned, and when uh, Red King 2 comes back in episode 25, he actually doesn't have those eyes. He actually has like kind of like those normal pupil type eyes. While this one has that sort of like kind of uh, black, like just plain black basically. So let's go over the articulation. Now, of course, because these are vinyl, vinyl figures or spark dolls as they were called back in 2013. Uh, there is very limited, of course. This figure only has three points of articulation. This one is pretty hard. Not super hard, but, you know, at least, at least it's sturdy, you know, I don't mind it. But I just thought I'd kind of point that out. Uh, and, of course, his arms can move. It can move full 360. And it looks like the waist can move, but it actually does not. The waist doesn't move at all. This is for, I guess, when they glue the figure or sort of, you know. I mean, I see that in, Go well, not Gomorrah. I would say Zedon, too. I remember he definitely has that thing going on with his waist. So it looks like it can move, but it really doesn't. But luckily, it doesn't break the immersion too much. At least it, at least it was nicely, like, you know, sculpted, and at least it's, you know, uh, planned out, you know, at least this isn't, like, something that ruins the figure, you know, it's not too much of an eyesore, is what I'm trying to say, so, all right, before we end the video, of course, we have to do a size comparison, so here he is to the last monster that we took a look at, which was Antlar, so, like I've mentioned, Antlar appeared in episode 7, so pretty much after that, we go into episode 8. So, I thought that it was fair for me to review this in order. So, as you can see, kind of the two titans together, and you could kind of see them side by side, uh, which is pretty neat. You know, it, he's he's decently sized, at least. You know, that's, that's good. Uh, although, as for Ultraman, I mean... Uh, you know, I, I, that's, that's kind of the issue, obviously the size. This one though, it's not too bad. I could, I could kind of get around with it. He's supposed to be a lot more bigger, but I, to me, at least this is sort of satisfying. At least I could, he still kind of, you know, same goes for Antlar. Antlar doesn't look too bad either. I think the size is fine, you know? It's not like perfect. It's not like he's super tiny. So at least we got that to think about, you know? So, and yeah, I see we could take a look at them right in the front. It looks pretty good, you know? What else can I say? But he's not the only Red King to get his own figure, actually. Yep. So, um, here he is compared to his uh, other counterpart, X-Red King. And, man, I, I honestly, I forgot when, like, what his first appearance was. I know it was, like, in, like, like Monster Battle something, you know? Uh, it was kind of, like, some sort of, like, kind of, like, Battle Royale against, like, Kaijus, basically, though. It was, like, that kind of show, you know? And, yeah, he's much more on the smaller size, but it's not a bad figure. Plus, it's nice to have multiple Red Kings, you know? I mean, he looks pretty cool. And, yes, I will definitely review him in the future, for sure. So, of course, let's, uh, let's do a... Let's try and do it a little quick, right? Let's let's show off some of the other um, Ultraman figures based on the on the 1966 series. Uh, here's Niranga, which I already did review. Uh, I wanted to take him out because I like how the back kind of looks similar, even though it's not really the same. But like, I just thought I just sort of mentioned that for you know detailing. And uh, oh, here's his uh, the other big baddie. We got Gomora, who will definitely get a review sometime in the future. Like I said, because I'm trying to review all the figures based off of uh, the 1966 series. And um, for one last round, you know, we got... This is the next figure I will definitely review is Bolton. Uh, you know, he I, he still has his tag on him. So, I, you know, I definitely plan to review him with this on, you know, to kind of give it a nice, fresh, like, review of the figure. Because I always got the tags not a you know not attached you know uh then we got roba a robust you know uh this one uh, honestly i'm gonna mention this really quick but it, it's just funny how they basically share the same body <laughs> like you know hey brother you know that's that's what that kind of reminds me of i can't wait to review him and yes i will also review him with the tag on because 
I don't know. It's it's more professional. Uh, te te tell us Tesla Tesla Don Tesla Don. I can't say his name, so I'm just gonna call him Tesla Don. Uh, here he is with him right next to each other. Of course, he also got the tag. Why not? You know, but this is the more updated version. Obviously, we'll get into that when I start to review him. And last, but certainly not least, Pigmon. You know, because they both appeared in the same episode. Even though, I have to note, this is not the same Pigmon that was in the same episode. It was a different version. This version of Pigmon is based off of Ultraman Max. You know, so I, I know it sounds weird, but trust me, when you look at the designs, you'll definitely see a lot of the differences for sure. So, yeah, that's about it. That finally ends the review. Uh, I hate that it took me so long to finally get to it, but hey, here we go, you know, and I can't wait to review Bolton. Uh, uh, honestly, I love this figure so much, honestly, though. It looks great. All the details are there. You know, it looks just like them. You know, it's like, it's the original thing. What can I say? And yeah, if you could kind of ignore the whole kind of issue with the sizing, because it's honestly not too bad. Honestly, it's a solid figure. I give this a good, maybe 10 out of 10. I know that that sounds weird. I know maybe... Maybe you guys don't really like that he's slightly short. I don't know. I think he's a perfect figure. He definitely kind of captures that sort of like look, you know. It's not like they got to shrink down some proportions or anything like that. Because yes, that that is kind of a common issue in the Ultra Monsters lineup. But honestly, if you don't get, if you don't got him, get him on Amazon. He's definitely cheap on there if you don't have him. Uh, I don't remember how much, but you're definitely not going to be paying $20 or so, right? You'll put, you'll be definitely paying for a decent amount. So, until then, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the toy review. Uh, you know, as always, if you if you like the video, you know, leave a like or su and subscribe. Uh, dislike the video if you dislike it. And, yeah, you know, that's about it. See you guys in the next one.